Yes. Uh, so what I think I might do is just um, do some practice and share what's going on for me as I go. I hope that's okay. Uh, there's no guarantee I'll come up with a theme of any use. <laughs> but I, I shall do my best to... Um, to share something with you. I mean, you, you see, usually um, I can turn up to a workshop um, like this, although although to be fair, I, I normally have a good practice in the morning before I do a workshop. But um, if, if I'm thrown in, in the middle of a teaching situation, if there's people in front of me, it's really easy because then I can um, just, uh, well, I ask what they want for one. And if there's nothing forthcoming, I just tune in, tune into what's going on for them and um, try and help. So um, I suppose probably the best bet for me right this moment would be to tune into what I, in, into what I need. And then um, with a bit of luck, that will help you. So what I need to do right now is lie down, I think. Lie down and... Um, get a sense of where I would like to work. So, and this is um, always a good starting point because my, my particular approach to lying down, it, it, it involves letting go of tension, but there's, um, there's an approach to it that honors the fact that we, the, the quality of our release is dependent on how we organize ourselves. Um, how we organize our touch, whether we are supported from touch through our structure, which includes the spine, or whether we are trying to do something to our bodies, you know, trying to stretch it or whatever. Um, those are not the only two options. But, uh, you know, if, if you lie down and relax and you sort of laid yourself out so that you feel a bit distorted, uh, well, so that you are a bit distorted, whether you feel it or not, it's another matter. Um, then the the it's difficult to relax because mind and body are the one, one are the same thing. Um, so the disturbances in the body will be reflected as disturbances in in the mind. You won't be able to relax. So I get quite active in my approach to relaxation, and essentially what I do is arrive in. Well, I attempt to arrive in confluent contact, as in each part of me, in this case, in this case I'm working with the upper spine and shoulders, um, and then my head, each part of me, as it arrives on the ground, becomes a potential point of support that doesn't stop with carrying the weight. It, there's a sense of from that touch, from that contact, through my bones, through my joints. And that's what I'm engaging with. So I'm using my feet in this in this moment. I'm trying not to hold my pelvis up because that's uh, that's kind of lifting my weight. Whereas I actually want to be supported by my touch. So I have to use my feet. Um, and yes, there's there's a sort of a quality of contact, especially with the hands and feet. No, not especially. But uh, but uh, without the hands and feet, you can't really understand what touch means um, as in the quality of engagement is going to be reflected within my body so for example if I'm busy um, pushing the ground away then I end up with a pushy relationship through my body um, and when you push the body it'll push back so you end up with this sort of unnecessary uh, fight with yourself whereas if I can, I'm, I'm back on my haptic intelligence. I can't help it. It's this course, so online course I'm running at the moment. But this, um, when the quality of my touch, I know, you know, the intention is simple. I want to feel supported. But then there's the quality of engagement. And I'm tuning directly in to the sense, the direct sensory impressions at the points of contact. So, and and refining my involvement in that. So, for example, the balls of the feet. If it, uh, you know, people come to me, and uh, most mostly people don't use the inside front of their feet for support. Um, 
So I get them to touch, and then, then um, because it feels effortful, that, uh, what is identified with is the effort of doing it, as opposed to the quality of support, the quality of contact. So if, I, if I'm busy grinding away with the balls of the feet, I get knee strain. Um, I, you know, I don't feel supported. I'm, I'm busy with the uh, interpreted idea of what I'm trying to do. Whereas if I can directly tune into the quality of that contact, I can, I can find firmness of support. But if it's kind of soft, if the contact is less aggressive, then the whole of the body starts to respond in a less aggressive way. And, and I get, I guess I get, I must get an endorphin hit or something. There, there's something in my body chemistry that softens with it. And then uh, I've got the outside edge of my foot and eventually the heel of the foot. Uh, I do it that way around because in a touch, uh, the, the use of the feet for support, the, the ball of the foot going down is generally uh, missing and uh, to give a bit of the game away, uh, when, when you touch on the inside, then the inside front line of the body can find support from that. So um, anyway, so I, I'm getting involved with my touch and I'm talking to you as I go, so I'm quite in my head. But if I'm clear that what I'm looking for is support, then I've also got the task of, uh, as, as well as tuning into the equality of contact, as well as the quality of contact, I'm tuning into whether that supports me, as in um, I'm, I'm starting to let go of some of the holding patterns that I might have previously associated with support. That's particularly around the groins, the hips, the pelvis. Most people are busy holding the pelvis one way or the other. So by staying with the intent and the quality of engagement, I get to allow things to change within the body. And actually what's happening is, uh, as a result of that, it's, it's simplifying. It's getting very, very easy. As in, I'm relaxing over my feet and I'm feeling spacious and light. Uh, I can give weight through my head, despite <laughs> being in it and talking to you. Uh, I can give weight through it as a point of support, and because of that, the heart is starting to open up without me having to push my chest forwards. The, the shoulders rest back, um, so I, I'm getting space around the top of my lungs. And then, um, little by little, I can add the kiss of the earth with the base of the spine. And again, that's the, the quality with which I arrive will determine how that feels. Most of us are busy, uh, are in the business of putting the, the pelvis down and then feeling heavy as a result. But if you take a bit of time with all the, with all the sort of lightness and emptiness that you develop from finding a quality of touch from the rest of you, when the base of the spine comes down, if you, if you kiss with it, then the body will receive a similar sort of embrace. There'll be a, oh, a feeling received by your touch. And that goes for the feet, feeling received by your touch. For the base of the spine, feeling received by your touch. The, sh the shoulders and upper back ribs, the, the head. And if I, and, and same with the hands, um, the reason I have them up in the air is so that I, their weight isn't interfering with my uh, relationships to touch and space. So there's also the contact of the hands in space. And rather than being busy with carrying my hands in space with effort, my hands are meant to support me. So being with the quality of contact and then using that touch to see, once again, if I feel supported by it. And 
And then the only remaining job is to make all touch have a similar quality. So I'm received by all points of contact from, from the hands, from the feet, from the head, the base of the spine, even the wings on the ground. So that from those places of contact, I can breathe. Because receiving the breath from support gives you a whole body sense of um, the breath the whole body sense of the space that you can have when you are supported through your bones from your touch. So I can breathe from my touch. And when I release the breath away from where I am supported inwards, I deflate towards the heart. Every part of me um, becomes less full of pressure as I move closer to the central channel from all directions, from touch, from space, from the inner surfaces towards the center of things, but quite specifically from the release of the breath around the heart to the heart itself. So that in that release of pressure, the, the the spine behind the heart and the heart itself starts to be more present to the space in front. I don't mean lifting the chest. The chest is emptying back from the hands. The body empties back from the feet. I mean a gathering towards the heart that allows the heart to be more present to the space in front of you as you give to your ground. And it's a dynamic practice. Um, when I'm teaching this in a in a class, um, my my difficulty is stopping people from falling asleep, keeping them entertained enough to stay present to the simple task of um, being with contact, breathing from it, and releasing from it back to the centre of things. But once that um, rhythm is established. It is the release of the breath and the opening from the heart that is responsible for your touch. The, the opening of the heart causes you to be through your feet, be through the base of the spine and the head. It causes you to uh, allow the wings to drop back from the support of the hands into the ground behind you. It, instead of it all happening from the outside in, it happens from the heart out. And yoga practice begins. It's a rhythmic practice that uh, where you, this is my fourth um, sort of condition. Once we've centered in the spine behind the heart and um, found that centering that relates you to both where you are on the earth and where you are in space. And the practice begins because from the rhythmic release of the spine behind the heart, two points of touch, you can allow movement to develop breath by breath as you release it. Every inhale needs to be um, itself. I, I would pause just be with what is, take a breath. And then when you release back to your center and arrive from your center into touch, you use that purchase to grow outwards from the heart through your into space, threading through space from the toes and from the fingers. Both of them sort of growing from whatever points of contact you have with the earth. And uh, this is leading me to explore bridge, personally. Um, you might be doing something else. 
And it's this rhythmic practice of um, finding the situation that means you can let go into your touch and breathe. And let go back from touch to your spine. So that the spine can begin to express through from support through space. So for some reason now I'm doing one legged bridge with a foot up in the air. So it makes it quite hard work. Uh, well, no, not hard work. It makes it intense work. Um, but it's stress free. It's because I have a space to breathe. I'm letting go of any holding patterns to breathe. And then when I release the breath, I can drop into my touch, drop back to my center and engage outwards from touch through space. And the back to your center, opening from the heart, expanding through fingers and toes in space becomes the practice. Uh, so I seem to be now catching hold of a big toe. <laughs> so I expect this might become a leg stretch or something. But uh, a leg stretch is a misnomer. It's um, learning how to extend the legs without conflict, without uh, complications. So same, it's the same business. It's uh, being relaxed enough to receive the breath from your support. So my touch hasn't gone away. You know. My contact, my sensitivity to being received by contact, hands, hand and foot in this case, is one of the part of it. The foot on the ground is another part, making all things equal so that I can release from it to breathe. And when I release from it to relieve, uh, to let go of the breath, something empties back to the middle. From the heart, I can engage into the earth. From the earth, I can thread through space, expressing through fingers and toes. It's a rhythmic practice. So we unwind unnecessary complications along the way. So I seem to have put that leg into half lotus. It's a moment of wanting to sort of express back from the hands and feet, from the support of the foot crossing the thigh. I'm doing half lotus now with the knees in the air and then widening from that. I'm doing you pose arms back from the support of the hands through the shoulders, wide in space through the wings and through the pelvic wings. But it's the same business, it's to make my, it's to feel supported from my touch, from my contact, as I breathe. I'm adding a bit of effort in the breath now, in the arrival of the breath, creating conditions for the space to breathe within this sort of um, wrapped up posture. So I'm breathing what I'm doing, back from my hands, back from my feet. And when I release the breath, I can release in the same direction towards the center of things. So once again, from the center of things, I embrace the earth and I can move in space through fingers and toes. Um, I seem to have popped myself into lotus. Uh, I've just remembered there's the other side to do. So I'm going to unravel, catch hold of the other foot. So I'm getting a bit more cognitive now, a bit less um, seeing what happens. I've uh, I've decided to hold this foot this time, but it's the same stuff. I need to feel supported. I need to res receive support from my contact. So I've got my hands, my foot in the air, the one on the ground, the contact the uh, pelvis makes with the ground, whichever side, both or one, it doesn't matter. The, the wings, the head. And I want to receive the breath from support. So I'm working with that now. I'm actually on to my fifth condition so that I can release back from my support to the center of things. And in doing so, the heart 
quite naturally opens up and the heart quite naturally engages with space from touch and the fingers and toes quite naturally are expressing from that heart opening rhythm. And I remembered the other side I did half lotus, so I'm going to cause that to happen. So I brought the thigh and foot together. There's a point of contact from which I can receive the breath, which I'm doing for my hands as well. Into the earth to make support equal as I breathe so that I get to release the breath back from my earth and back from space towards the heart and then the heart can let go into movement through fingers, through toes Now I'm back to my starting place. The starting place is the most, one of the most powerful practices. And um, if you follow my instructions, you can call it Mahapranayamasana. It's, uh, it's my own invention. You know, there's lying on the ground with your hands up in the air, and then there's the practice. And, and this practice of basically engaging directly through sensory impression with an equality of contacts, equality of touch and support that gives you space to breathe and that gives you the center of things as you release the breath that gives you the rhythm of practice the ability to float into what you're doing and then to release the heart to release into expression into of the posture we call that Mahapranyamasana the, the, that particular series of instructions that whole thing is my approach to practice uh, I call it creating the conditions because um, it's less to do with doing yoga to the body. Well, it's nothing to do with that. It's entirely about, um, I feel great now. Um, <laughs> it's entirely about creating the conditions for yo the natural, uh, the nature of yoga to arise within you. And it's for everyone, for anyone. You don't need to know anything about yoga to engage with this. You don't need to know anything about body mechanics. The thing that happens um, with the mind is um, it can interfere with the practice of yoga. It interferes with the natural development because its job is to be present and to, you know, because of the nature of the mind. Its job is to be checking for difficulty, to uh, make sure life is safe, that sort of thing. But yoga arises outside of that normal day to day conflicted relationship to life, where you're sort of on adrenal alert. Uh, yoga is supposed to be outside of that. Um, and this practice, this, this, this giving the mind these things to point its attention at, um, is giving it positive directions of attention, support space to find the yoga which begins when we can start to move and breathe and support ourselves from the opening of the heart that is the practice of the fourth condition then we just need to learn how to trust the practice so we let go of control and that's the fifth and sixth conditions Wow, uh, I really enjoyed that. Hmm. I hope you did. So um, I think, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, three minutes to the end. So uh, that'll do. Um, that was really deep. Uh, I won't leave this up for very long. So if you want to share it, do so within a 
for a few days. Um, I will do a five minute prey scene, maybe. Um, it will be on the Aquaviva website for 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 uh, those that um, for, for silver members that have signed up for that. Where you get um, you, you get these sessions edited and recorded, uh, recorded and edited every week. You get a new class every week. Um, do join if you if you want to have easy access to all of my free um, outputting there. Um, in the meantime, what's going on? Uh, Glasgow, come and see me in Glasgow, Glasgow next Saturday up in um, I'm in Arlington Bars, I think, on Saturday. Um, so it's a nice studio, it's very bright, and I'm doing a yoga solutions thing, and it's called um, Moving from the Heart. Uh, yeah, magical stuff happens, so so book in and come and come and work with me. Uh, other than that, um, there's online courses, there's one to ones. Uh, those of you down south can come and see me towards the end of November, 22nd of November. I'm uh, Midhurst, um, near near um, Guildford, I think. And then Saturday, the 23rd, I'm in Angmering. There's three places left in the afternoon for that. Um, what else is there? Yes, uh, December, uh, uh, there's uh, some Yoga Solutions workshop, it's, uh, letting go into the flow. Um, that'll be um, December the 8th in Brighton and the following, that's uh, Sunday, and the following Saturday in Glasgow, which I think is the 14th or 15th. 15th, is that right? No, 14th, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, that's me. Oh, uh, yes, uh, my next online course. Yes, it's getting clear about what it's going to be about. It's, uh, um, it's about proprioceptivity, proprioception, and getting clear, uh, clarifying, clarifying that particular sense. You know, we have um, this ability to know where we are in space. It's a, it's a real live part of our nervous system. And there's a... Um, <clears throat> There's recent research that proves that we actually map out the space around us, which um, is something I've been working with for decades. And <laughs> people used to look at me like I was a like I was a lunatic when I talked about relating to space. <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, uh, I'm going to do a whole course on it because, the, um, like, like there are ways of relating to your touch that can transform the physical experience of being in your body. Um, the same is exactly the same is true for how we relate to space. We have historic reactions to to our well, we have reactions to the space that we occupy based on history, based on what's happened to us in the past. Um, so we retract from space that feel that where we there has been some sort of feeling of unsafety, and we push forwards into space or pull back, uh, push back into space. We 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 have a relationship to space that is based on history. So it's colored and it's unclear and, and it leads to a distorted picture of what it feels like to be in your body. So the, the, the next series I'm going to be running for dedicated teachers, practitioners. Um, I, th I think you need to have um, a good background in some sort of uh, body work to be able to join. But, um, because uh, it's it, you know it's pretty it's pretty much out, it's pretty out there really um, in terms of uh, the next level, but um, yes, it'll be about proprioceptivity, our relationships to space, and how that relates to the spaces within. And um, I, I I'll be using the course over six weeks, so uh, seven weeks with an intro, which I'll do in December. Um, I'll use it. I use the course to map out um, specific relationships between inner spaces and the space that we occupy and the most harmonious kind of um, relationships that can evolve. Um, they, they would be the relationships we would have if there was no detrimental history going on, if there was no reason for retracting from space in the first place. And it's, um, yes, it will be a powerful series for those of you that are interested, drop me a line. Um, I, I've, I've got a list of people that have already asked, so they get first refusal. And um, there'll be two versions of it. You can you can join it live, um, and so I interact with you on screen. There's you can also for the first um, over the course so over the over the time that I'm running it, you can join with the recordings and. Um, 
um, and get one-to-one -one backup so that we can look at the specifics together. Um, it's quite involved, and it's uh, yes, it's all uh, the haptic intelligence course is is, is amazing, and it's um, yes, it's 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 a very good format to be doing this thing in because it, it gives people the, the space to work it out in, in their own way, and I can be there directly to monitor progress so that um, we can make the minor adjustments for the blind spots because everyone you know that's the definition of uh, being human really. Um, and that's the job of a teacher to help with those things. Anyway, uh, that's my yeah my next online course. You can you can you can actually um, sign up for the haptic course now, um, and follow it through the recordings. And again, you get one to ones that go with it. So um, um, yes. Anyway, that's me. Uh, I really feel good for that. Um, I felt quite indulgent quite selfish doing my own practice on camera <laughs> but uh, if it, I hope it was helpful and um, I will do a five minute version of this uh, edited version of this so you can put it out there uh, but in the meantime feel free to share this one whilst it's still up uh, or come and join the website and then you'll you'll have lifelong access to this and um, but basically all the all the um, everything we've done this year okay so Lots of love to you all. I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. This is me signing off until the same time, same place next week. Lots of love to you all. Bye. Oh, there we go.